Do you really need a bunch of equipment to bake sourdough breads? I don't think so. However, there are some tools that I use all the time, and then there are some tools that I think they're nice to have, but not essential, and I wanna show you those today in this video. When you're ready to bake bread, you need, at least for the sourdough breads, you need a sourdough starter, and that needs to live somewhere. Lately, I've really been loving these Weck jars because they come in a variety of sizes and I like their lids. I often use this lid with the rubber gasket and I have some really good sourdough starter right here. I hope you can see this. Ooh, I'm so excited. And then um, when I put this in my refrigerator, I have these little clamps, so it's pretty airtight and I have a very particular sourdough maintenance method that um, I'll be linking up here and I'll be linking in the description box below this video if you're interested in that because I don't usually keep it on the counter. They also come with wooden lids that are really nice is when you have it out on the counter but even when I use the glass lid and the sourdough starter is getting really active just keeping the lid on like this um, you know you got to be careful it actually adds enough weight but then air and gases can escape but I've heard that even if you clamp the lid shut it will allow to let air out and it's not going to explode in your face or something like that so so that's um, my favorite jar but just any glass jar mason jars are just as perfect for keeping your sourdough starter now in terms of your flour you can obviously just buy flour um, white flour whole wheat flour and there is a lot of good sources where you can get your flour i prefer to buy whole grains and grind my own grains and for that I love using a mock mill and again I have an entire video in which I talk about the different models of mock mills this is the KitchenAid attachment this is not a standalone so if you have a stand mixer this will work great and obviously this is not for everyday baking large amounts of flour that you're milling but for our household and for the small amount of space that I have in my kitchen it's perfect however there are really nice standalone grain mills and again I'll I'll link everything in the description box below this video so you can easily find it and then this fits on my kitchen aid stand mixer and I can grind my grains and then I have my flour now that you have your sourdough starter and your flour you need to mix it and obviously you need to do that in a bowl this has been my favorite bowl because it's actually not very heavy and it's enamel they say that sourdough can react with stainless steel however i have found that even in commercial bakeries they use big steel vats so that's obviously not a big concern and i like this one but there's also other bowls or if you mix your sourdough dough in a stand mixer, you can use the bowl attachment that comes with your stand mixer. Since I often, especially for my whole grain sourdough bread, um, I don't need to mix it a whole lot. I have a variety of wooden spoons. Um, as you can tell, they're really well loved and they're old and they're my favorite ones probably because they look so used. This one has a little hole in it. I'm not exactly sure what that is for and um, I've had these forever. And then I have a set of smaller ones that are just perfect for stirring your sourdough starter if you stir it. And again, I have another video in which I'm talking about my sourdough starter method and people always ask me can you use steel or metal forks and um, utensils with your sourdough and i want to say yes even if you just stir it a little bit it's not going to hurt it at all and like i said stainless steel um you know professional bakeries let their breads rise in stainless steel vats so obviously it can't be so bad 
Now, depending on what bread I'm baking, um, this is a little bit different what I'm using. So if I just do my whole grain bread, there's not a whole lot involved. If I do a little fancier bread, and especially if I wanna show it to you guys and I wanna come up with a recipe that you can easily recreate at home because I bake and stir a lot by feel, it is very nice to have a kitchen scale. This digital kitchen scale I've had forever. It lasts forever. It takes a very small battery and I don't need to replace it very often. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. There are some analog scales that look really pretty, but they take up a little bit more space. So if you're baking from a recipe and you want to be sure about the um, ingredients, I always recommend weighing your ingredients. It gets you a much more accurate measurement than volume measurements because depending on how you pack your flour it's going to have a very different weight now you have your bread dough all made up and you want to let it rise and if you don't cover it it will dry out on the top which you don't want i have these beeswax wraps that i love using because they are reusable and they are very green, so um, I like using those. So obviously, you can use any plastic wrap or even a plastic bag. And then sometimes I use these bowl covers that are also really pretty. And often what I actually do is I put a linen bowl cover right on top of a beeswax wrap, and that gives me some double protection. This is actually what I'm talking about. I have a bread that's rising in here and this is why I can't really show you much more of my proofing basket that I have. If I'm just making my regular whole grain sourdough bread, I'll let that proof in the bowl. But if I'm making a more fancy looking round loaf like this, or even an oval bowl, these come in different shapes. I'm using this banneton or proofing basket and this is already looking pretty nice. So I'll bake that when I'm done with this video. If you don't have a proofing basket, I know that a lot of people simply use a bowl and line it with something and that works just as well. When you're ready to bake your bread, um, again, it depends on <laughs> which bread I'm making. If I'm making my whole grain uh, sourdough loaf that I use a loaf pan for, I actually love using this glass loaf pan. There's a lot of loaf pans out there that are Teflon coated and I don't like that a whole lot. There are some steel ones and there are some cast iron ones, but the cast iron ones tend to be fairly small. This is actually a fairly large one and you can either oil it and flour it or you can use parchment paper, which makes cleanup very easy and you don't have to wait to lift your bread out of the loaf pan when it's ready to bake. Also, if you're making a round loaf like I'm making over there, like my, my boule or whatever you want to call it, I like to use a cast iron Dutch oven. This one is a combo oven. And what's nice about it is that I can, again, slide the bread onto a piece of parchment paper and then either bake it on this one here and then use this part as a lid or vice versa i drop it in here and use this as a lid because it will trap the steam and make sure that your bread can rise and then after about half the baking time i take the lid off and i finish bake it without the lid now here are some nice to haves but not must haves one is a bowl scraper and i always pride myself on not having a lot of plastic in my kitchen this is one of the two or three items maybe that are plastic but it came with um, a food processor so i kept it it's really nice if you're trying to get the dough out of your bowl to use that and then a bench scraper can also be very useful um, I don't use it very often. I mostly like to use my hands. However, I actually use this when I'm ready for cleanup and I can just scrape my counter with this and clean it up very easily like that. Another nice to have is a lame or a bread knife. This is a very sharp razor blade and it 
helps really scoring the top of your bread for a nice ear or for some fancy design. You can use a sharp knife, but like I said, if you bake breads more often and you want to invest in something, this is not very expensive and it's nice to have. A lot of these items actually do come in a kit. I will also recommend that down below um, so you don't have to buy the items individually and then it's going to actually be a little bit more affordable. Now your bread is ready, you have baked it, it comes out of the oven, it smells wonderful, and that is a good time to use a cooling rack or wire rack so that you don't have any steam buildup and then you know your bottom of the bread gets really moist and soggy and that's not very nice. So I always like to use that. I have to often just put it on my cutting board. And when you're ready to cut into your bread, you can obviously break your bread that's always an option however if you want slices of bread here is a bread knife i can't link to this one because it is so old that they don't even make it anymore it is a german knife german brand that i've had for maybe 30 years close to 30 years I will be linking something similar. Um, they don't need to be very expensive. And this one is amazing how sharp it has um, been over the years and I haven't had to resharpen it. And we use it almost every day. It actually lives on the counter. What I don't do is I don't put it in the dishwasher because they say that it um, dulls the blades. So um, we almost never really wash it. So that lives out on the counter. I hope you found this helpful. As always, leave me a comment if you have any question or a comment. And if you're looking for more sourdough recipes, I have an entire playlist right here that you can watch so that you can make your own sourdough breads.